evening, uh, whichever applicable to you. And uh, I'm very happy to be here for, for the first time um, uh, to, keep, uh, to share some of our work over the years. Um, so um, I think you already know that the, um, for bugs, most people working on uh, terrestrial bugs and there are very, very few people who are really working on uh, water bugs. And um, for, for example, in Southeast Asia um, ourselves, I think we have like less than five people who are really working on the uh, taxonomies and also the fauna of the water box. And it is like, we make a, a challenge for, for us. Um, so a little bit about um, the location of uh, where I am, right? So, Okay, I think it's all right. So, Vietnam is right, right in the center of the what we call Southeast Asia, and it is like in between the continental part and the archipelago. And over the year, most people like spend a lot of effort on on the archipelagos, and there are a lot, a lot of data for uh, water bugs from from this part. But on the continental part, uh, there are, in fact there. Are, there's a published data uh, over the last century, but uh, there's a lack of what we call a systematic uh, sampling uh, throughout the region, and that make the our knowledge about the, the, this uh, this part of the world is very limited. So I I am based in Vietnam, and um, in the past like in twenty years like twenty years ago I went to uh, to Singapore for my graduate study. And at that point, I decided that I would work on uh, water parks. And then I came back to Vietnam um, in 2008, and I continued the work uh, since then. So hopefully today I can I will share with you some of the things that I found that are interesting, and maybe also open up for like future um, development on this part. So I think I don't know why this is keep coming back. Sorry. All right. So Vietnam is, uh, as I said, uh, mentioned earlier, is a part in between the continental part and the archipelago. And what is interesting about this country is that it's like kind of a long and slender country, and stretching from the north where it has like more of the uh, subtropical climate. Uh, the only way down to the south with a typical tropical climate and the long slender and the on the western borders of the countries are the range of mountains and we also have a very long coastal line and it will and it's, it is like heavily influenced by the the, the monsoon uh, climate and it pair up with the topography of the, in the country. Um, there's a subset of the climate uh, uh, condition in different parts of the country. And all together combined with this topography and so on, we have uh, really great diversity of different kinds of habitat, especially for the aquatic environment. So we have the high mountain stream in no northern area, which is uh, it's very, very similar to the temp temperate uh, uh, climate. In a certain part of the year when during winter, there may even like be snows or uh, part of the water can be frozen and so on. And when so down to the south, we have the typical uh, tropical rainforest. And along the shore, we have different kinds of uh, marine ecosystem as well uh, from the mangroves, but the mangroves in Vietnam are I think more of the similar to the one that in a colder climate when all the mangrove trees are actually very short. And um, unlike the mangroves in, in, in um, Malaysia or in Singapore when they have like, big trees and uh, like the real forest on land. And we also have other kinds of um, ecosystem along the way. And that I think that is the condition for many kinds of uh, water bugs to, to live on. So uh, for water bugs, I think many of you already know, but I will mean just uh, 
go through very quickly here about the introduction of these, right? So for water bugs, we can roughly uh, group them into three different uh, sets, uh, depending on their lifestyle and habitat. The first one would be the one that live on most of the water surface, like the water striders, the, some of the other ones that run along the banks, but on the water surface. And a few of them actually also uh, conquer the marine environment. For example, the coron traders, which is one of the most elusive group of uh, water bugs in the world. Uh, so far, I think the latest uh, revision by Dr. Pohemus, it was like only like more than 10 species and very limited uh, this, with, with very limited distribution data. So there's still a lot of uh, things to, to work on. And the second group is the true aquatic bugs. And most of them, uh, all of them belong to the infrared nepomorpha, but not all nepomorphas are true water bugs. So we have to exclude two here, uh, two families. And those are actually live on the shore that belong to another subset that we call the, the shore bugs. So those are the ones that live uh, totally in water. And even some of them, they, their whole life cycles in the water and they don't even need to, to, go, to go back to the water surface for, uh, for respiration. For example, like the, the benthic water bug of the uh, family I fellow Caride. And of course, the shore bugs. So this is the group that uh, I think is like in between, some people would just consider them terrestrial bugs, but uh, some also consider them as the part of the water bugs because they are uh, strongly associated with the aquatic environment. They live on the shore. They don't really need to go to near, I mean, they go near to the water, but they just don't live on water or underwater. So include, um, some families in the infraorder leptopomorpha and two families of the nepomorpha. And with this uh, diversity of the uh, habitats that they use, right, and in combination with the diversities of the habitats and the climate condition in Vietnam or also in Southeast Asia in general, um, there's a belief that there's still a lot of things to, to work on. So 20 years ago, when I went to Singapore uh, and I decided to work on uh, water bugs after I tried to look for uh, old literatures. And I found that like, more, for more than a century, there have been a lot of data for Southeast Asia and there are also some for Vietnam. But most of the work and most of the data for Vietnam were actually treated in the a more greater geographic scope like Southeast Asia and uh, most of the data from Vietnam were actually based on the random collection. Uh, there would be like certain uh, collection, especially in U Europe. And a lot of um, entomologists have contributed to the, the knowledge of Southeast Asia and very, very few uh, that treated uh, the Vietnam fauna separately. So I, I took the inspiration from some of these work, especially um, one of the paper in uh, 1996 by Dr. Zetter and Dr. Chen, when they uh, reported the museum collection in Europe, some two or three museum collection in Europe, uh, and reported the checklist for just the Jerry Day of Vietnam, and just based on random collection from the museum, they reported up to like 40 species. So. I took the inspiration from that and, and started uh, the work with, uh, with the Jerite. And uh, I realized that without the systematic sampling, we may not get near to the true diversity of the fauna. So for, uh, for some years, especially for, my, for, for the first few years when I did for my graduate study, I keep coming back to Vietnam to do sampling and try to to make it in a more systematic uh, way to cover representative habitat uh, from all the way from northern Vietnam to, to, to cent central and southern Vietnam. Try to get more of the representative habitats and try to get more of the uh, accurate uh, re representation of the uh, fauna for Vietnam. So 
this is one of the first few species I've ever reported um, more than a century ago. So the first species were, um, uh, I think this is a second species uh, reported by uh, China. And this is also one of the largest, this is actually the largest uh, water strider in the world. And it's probably endemic to Vietnam and uh, to the Hainan Islands of China. Um, this is um, something that uh, when, I, when I came out to the fields, right, the, for my first field trip, actually I was lucky to, to encounter this and actually gave me extra motivation to, to really to, uh, to go on with the water box. And um, along, the, along the years, I think I'm quite, also quite fortunate to have collaboration with uh, many senior uh, workers like Dr. Dan Bohemus um, to work out on the taxonomies and also fauna of Vietnam. For example, this is our recent uh, collaboration. Like, it's already like seven, uh, six years ago, it's not so recent. But if you exclude three years of COVID, this is like already quite recent to work. So we got, um, uh, based on our combined effort of the systematic collection throughout the country, because like in the early uh, 2000s, um, two of the Bohemuses also went to Vietnam for, for sampling, I think uh, for two trips, and they have also obtained uh, similar results and a lot of uh, collection for, for water parks. So we combined the effort and we report the the, I think we reviewed the, this genus for, for Vietnam and uh, we share a lot of species and especially the new species and that to show that um, if we have a more systematic uh, sampling, we can obtain certain things. And when I went back to Vietnam and so had um, collaboration with um, my colleagues in the university and uh, related uh, institution, we have also based on the extensive uh, systematic collection uh, throughout the country in many different years, um, we managed to produce some uh, checklists or reviews of certain groups, but there's still a lot to do. And I think uh, in the next uh, few parts, I'm going to highlight some of the story that I think maybe we still have uh, a lot of things to do in the future. The first group is about the true water striders. So most of the water strider, when people uh, talk about maybe the one that live on ponds or lakes, those are very peaceful, those are very easy to catch. But some of them uh, do live right in the middle of very fast running streams. I will call them the torrent striders because like you cannot find them in quiet water or peaceful water. Usually they would, uh, run and scrape uh, right in the middle of the flow and only when they are tired or when they want to rest right they hang on the rocks uh, right in the middle of streams and for this group uh, the nature of movement they are very fast and also uh, on the surface of their body they are full of like silvery reflective pubescence that make them uh, merge very well to the turbulence of water so because of the water surface turbulence, they reflect a lot of white sunlight, uh, sunlight so they merge very well. So I think for like nearly a century since the first species reported of this genus, uh, there was very little attention uh, to this group until I think in 1995, Dr. Andersen and Dr. Chen uh, provided the first revision on this group. And they reported about like only nine species, and most of them are from were from China. I think, and only one species from from Thailand, from northern part of Thailand. So uh, during my first Finn trip uh, back in Vietnam for my graduate study, I specifically searched for this group. And on the high mountain of northwestern part of Vietnam, the highest areas, uh, we encounter like up to now we encounter about like five species and then a certain area they coexist with each other so the red colbatis gongvor is actually the first my my first species that i encountered and described uh, uh, nearly 20 years ago uh, and uh, for information the word gongvor 
is uh, rooted from Vietnamese word referring to the water striders. But along the way, when we keep visited certain places and we keep encounters even like further species of the same place. Uh, so those are the one also from northwestern part of Vietnam. Um, also on high, um, the one on the right, the right, right uh, on very high mountain is up to like 2000 meters above sea level. We haven't got managed to go further up yet because of the uh, accessibility, but hopefully in the future we can go further up like more than 2000 meters to see what may be different there or will be the same. And the one on the left were right in the middle of the northwest uh, western uh, part of Vietnam, but with a lower part of the country. But they are in a more what you call an isolated forest. They they belong to a national park, but surrounded this national park are own developed uh, areas, the residential areas. So they are uh, somewhat isolated from other forests in Vietnam. And we found uh, also another species. And um, after like uh, two or three years of COVID, we were grounded. And OT until last year, we managed to have the first spin trip and we headed to the central part of Vietnam. And also not west, not eastern part of Vietnam, we found um, uh, two more new species from the, this uh, genus. And uh, I think uh, concurrently, we also had some um, contact with uh, our colleagues in uh, the Nankai University of China and we happened to share one of the new species because um, our colleagues from Nankai also nearly around the same time they also went around China to do the sampling and they found uh, two new species from China and one of them actually close to the border of Vietnam. So we share one species between the borders in northwestern Vietnam and southern China. So we join our work uh, to review this genus and we realize that for the moment, um, this genus, Rhycobatis, most of them are either in China or in Vietnam, only one species in Thailand. So if we expand this uh, work into other countries surrounding, uh, we may have more idea, but for the time being, we can just like, uh, Temporary concluded is that it's a review for the genus, and we have like now already like nearly 20 species compared to the nine species like more than 25 years ago when the first revision was done. So I think there's a lot of work to do for that book. And the second group I want to share with you today is about the water form species. So if we come back to any water forms, that usually we we'll feel like, oh, it's wet. Most people will try to get to avoid that, to get close to the water form. But once if you can like withstand the wet or like torrential flow of water from, from the top and get close to the rock uh, areas of the water form, then we realize that there are certain groups that are highly adapted to the water form condition. Uh, there are many other different groups of uh, insects like beetles, like um, uh, autoptera also live on water form. But they also do some uh, do have some bugs that live on the water form, especially the one of the water strider. Uh, they through evolution they went back to the what we call semi-terrestrial habitat instead of skating on water surface. And also a few other groups like the nocorid. So the Namtok cocoris was like only discovered like uh, 15, 16 years ago by Dr. Robert Sais and his student. Uh, from Thailand, and they also reported uh, some species from Vietnam. So this is some of the group that have been like overlooked for over the years. So I focus on the Eotrichus as also one of the group when I first started to study water bugs. So during my first spin trip back in Vietnam, uh, when I searched for water form, uh, I found one species that we call Vietnamensis for the time. Um, it was based on the inspiration from under sense revision. At that time, it's like less than 10 species reported. And subsequently, to, after the revisions of, uh, by Dr. Anderson, um, people started to pay more attention to this group. And there are quite a number of uh, species reported and described from different parts uh, of Asia. And uh, this genus is like 
only restricted to to Asia, uh, mostly in uh, sen, uh, southern uh, Asia and Southeast Asia, and haven't have not seen any uh, any species out of this range. So when I came back to Vietnam over the years, I tried to do the samplings and even repeated sampling in certain area to see uh, what was really like and uh, is it like there's only very few species of Eutrichus and I found out that uh, there may be more. Uh, for the Vietnamensis, we did uh, survey uh, throughout the countries and uh, we only found them in northern Vietnam. And some other species we only found in only like one or two location, indicating that they may have very restricted distribution. And this is only in Vietnam. If we can expand it, the study to other parts of the Asia, we may obtain more and more species from this. So, also uh, last year when we first headed to southern and uh, central, uh, central and southern Vietnam, we also encountered another species in the central highland of Vietnam. That to prove that I think our sampling, even though we try to cover it, like wide range of representative uh, habitats and uh, geogra geographic region, we still have a lot of work to do uh, with this because like if we keep coming out to a new place and keep encounter uh, new taxa, it means we still have our sampling is still not very complete. And the next group I want to share with you today was about the tiny ones. So the previous group are about the group that have been uh, that live in uh, what we call ignore habitats. Uh, this is about the group that have often been ignored because that they are so so small. Usually these bugs are just like uh, one or two or, or the maximum three millimeters, and they are too, super tiny. And most people don't want to work on them because uh, for identification in this group, it requires the dissection of genitalia put them on the glass slides and do a lot of process to, to keep these slides uh, permanently and can be stored in, in collection. A lot of work and ded dedication. But I was uh, fortunate to have a very enthusiastic student uh, who was very eager to look at my collection compiled up over like nearly 20 years uh, throughout because like, every time I collect this group, I think, oh, sm so small, very difficult, don't have enough time, put that uh, beside, do it later. And that later was like five years ago when I got that student. Uh, but our expectation when we first started was not very high because like we found that uh, in the 1960s or 70s, there have been a lot of work by uh, Burriskis and a few other people reported the fauna from, from Vietnam specifically. So we only hope that we can have more systematic views of the uh, species list and so, and so distribution. But when my students started looking at details, when they, we started to dissect on the specimen, I mean, not all, but on the representative uh, samples, then we realized that actually there's a lot of species that do not match to what have been reported from Asia. So she had to do go through all the uh, com compare and then try to uh, to make sure that everything is correct. And we found out that actually from Vietnam we add like twenty more species, and including to like eleven new species and few others like country reports. And some of them are actually only based on very few samples and from very few location. Previously, people usually think about these micronectis are uh, the one that are highly um, dispersible because they have a strong uh, flying ability and they are also among the what you call the pioneers. But I think that only few of them are pioneers. Most of them are, will have more restricted uh, distribution and some of them are only found in like high mountain and with the cool, cooler climate. So I think those would be the one that uh, we really need to uh, look for also in the future and imagine that we only look for the collection in Vietnam and if we can expand that uh, study into surrounding country I think that we can we can see more uh, new things coming up so I think that 
for water bugs, even though I think for workers on water bugs, I'm the minority compared to terrestrial bugs, but there's still a lot of things to work on. Um, so over the years, these are the data. I think it's like more still, even though it's after 20 years, but I think it's still like preliminary because there's still a lot of uh, things to be done. And you can see the, the strong bias. This is actually my phone because like over the year, I focus so much on, on Jared. Of course, I also work on other groups, but I realized that the valley is considered is the richest uh, family in water parks. But in Vietnam, it's very poorly represented. It's only more than 30 species as compared to the Jerry. It's like already close to 90 species. And few other groups, especially the Hebride, they are very small, living between land and water. And uh, in Vietnam, we haven't got, got so much data on that, even though we try to do uh, a lot of collection, but it seems that they are more difficult to, to encounter. And the similar situation is also for the true water box. So thanks to the work from, from my student, uh, we have like a lot, we inflate the number of the micronectid, but other groups like the Aphelicaris or the Halotrophid, uh, there would be more because we know that some of these groups, they, they tend to have like more restricted uh, distribution. And even our recent collection from the last uh, one and two years, we and still encounter new species, but we just don't have enough time to really work on the description and publish them yet. And the last group is about the shawbuck, and I, you can see the numbers is like yeah, it's much much lower compared to the other groups of water bugs. That also show that there are still a lot of things to work on here. And also, I think this group is also kind of the ignored group. Uh, in Vietnam, maybe in the future, if you are interested in Shoba, you can just come over to Vietnam and do more collection on that. Yeah, so over the years, I think since I first started, I think I'm very fortunate to have a lot of people who help me to give me a lot of advice and also give the opportunity for me to do a lot of collaboration. So. I would like to thank them all and because these of the limitation of the time also space on the slide I cannot name them all uh, here but uh, some of them started with me from day one giving me the advice on how to work on water parks it's like Dr. Lana Cheng or Dr. Uh, Mrs. Yang from the uh, museum in Singapore my academic supervisor Professor Peter Ng and also my colleagues and senior colleagues and also friend and collaborator like Dr. Zeta, Dr. Pohemus and Dr. Sai and many others uh, in Singapore and Vietnam and so uh, get me that. And the challenge were, I think for the people who are based in Southeast Asia and do taxonomy is the, the access to uh, museum collection in different parts of the world because in the past a lot of people went to Southeast Asia, did a lot of collection. In maybe now they keep them in Europe or in the US. And the people in Southeast Asia, except for the people in Singapore, they have very limited access to this collection. So I think this is also the challenge that hinder the taxonomy research in, in, in Southeast Asia. And maybe the reason why we don't have so many local Southeast Asian people who really work on taxonomy because of their likes of access. So I also, once again, I feel very fortunate because I have the opportunity to collaborate with and also to have the access to some important collection uh, in Singapore, in Europe, and also want to, to really match and to compare with the historical records of the you know, fauna of Southeast Asia. And with that, I want to finish my work here, uh, my presentation here, and Thanks for watching.